Now this scenario number two, all B cards, and I'll go over the scoring cards as well. The Grizzly Bears, uh, they score per group of three bears with no other bears next to it. So that can be in any shape. Three bears together means you score 10 points. Pretty straightforward. The Elk scores per group of Elk in exact shape shown on this card. So you could have a single Elk, a line of two, a line of three and a triangle, or a line of four basically and a diamond. And then different scoring amounts for those shapes. The Salmon scores for uh, salmon runs, kind of like we did before, where they're not adjacent to other salmon, just in a, creating a line, but it can turn. This one, it's slightly less points overall, so you can't go for a super long run of salmon. You're gonna, going to want to split off into other animals. The hawks uh, score for each hawk that is not adjacent to other hawks, but has a direct line of sight to a hawk. Means, um, so because of the shape of these tiles, they need to be in direct straight lines with each other. They can't be at weird diagonals. And then depending on how many different ones of those you have, you score more and more points. And then we have the red fox uh, scores for each fox, a uh, number of unique adjacent animal pairs. Foxes do not count. So, so you have two bears, two elk, two salmon next to it. That's three pairs. Um, so that one fox could score for the, up to three pairs. Now those the pairs do not have to be touching each other, so this does show that the salmon don't have to be touching to still count as a pair because there's two of them touching the fox. Relatively straightforward, but if you have questions about it, feel free to ask. So kind of like before, we're gonna have four tiles face up with four animal tokens right next to them. Try to do this and view so I've put all the animal tokens back now I did talk about the tiles because of the number in the game I was able to preset basically have two games ready to go but typically you would use a random selection and remove so many based on player count but as it worked I'm gonna be using the other half of the tiles we'll get to see them all but we'll see if it all also affects the score at all I don't know if there's repeats of tiles or anything like that so let's get our first animals out. We've got a fox, an elk, a bear, and a salmon. Now keep in mind these starting tiles all in general have the same layout of some sort. They should all have a single uh, single habitat slash single wildlife option. They should all have a three uh, wildlife with double habitat and a double habitat with the double wildlife option on it. The arrangement might be different. I've not looked at all of them, but it does appear like they each have a 1-1, one, one, a 3-2, and a 2-2. Two, two. So, it doesn't really matter which one you start with. They're just going to have different animals' habitat arrangements on them. So, it will be semi-asymmetric uh, when you're playing it multiplayer. But in general... That's how tile and drafting games go. You're not going to end up with the same thing. So let's get this started. I'll try to keep my whole tableau on screen as we go. Feel free to yell at me that if you can't see something, can't hear me, anything like that. So let's get started on scenario B. Uh, so in this case, we do like arrangements of elk. Bears score some decent points straight up. Foxes like pears, eagles are nice to be unadjacent to each other. So let's see how I can also maximize my habits at the same time. So here I have wetlands, prairies, adjacent, forest, mountain, river, wetland. So I want to be watching for those habitats as well to expand out. So like last time, uh, it may have been close to the same, but for instance, this river prairie isn't really going to help next week uh, because they don't, they're not already adjacent for me. But in this one, this one over here, a mountain prairie, I could easily branch off and then reconnect them a lot faster. This forest, that's pretty straightforward, and the mountain's pretty straightforward as well. Uh, 
salmon runs are going to end up being shorter. Not bad. Foxes are a little bit harder to score, even though you score all of them. So I probably won't focus as much on a fox scenario of this game, even though I played into the fox salmon run last time. Maybe I'll play into a couple of elk setups. Some bears. And the hawks are nice too. So let's, you know, let's just get started with the, the elk. I'm going to take this elk option right here. You know, I just talked about how that's not a great option for me because of the, the way that tile is. So I don't know why I would take that one. I could start with the bears. I have a place for a bear. By placing the bear there, it covers my only fox option, but it opens up another fox option. So a good rule of thumb is to keep your options open by not necessarily all, uh, covering all of an animal type. So on your board, because then you're forced to draw into that tile to be able to place that type again. So for instance, if I cover this bear and I don't have any other bears out, I can't get any more bears down because I'm blocking myself essentially until I draw into the bear tile. So they're nice when they give you options. So I think I want to do this. So if, by placing this bear down, it's better. I'm covering my fox option as well, but I'm getting into a fox as well, which I'm going to do here. So now the only thing I can't place is a bear until I get a bear. Set that aside. Shift. We're going to be doing the same thing, shifting new stuff out every round. Ooh, that's a solid bear. Let's see what it's going to combo with. Ooh, a combo bear. That may just be a, a winning play. So we talked about elk likes its shape. Because I'm with eagle here, eagle here as options, but we don't want eagle touching each other. If that's going to be an eagle, I won't want that to be an eagle. So that basically says salmon elk. At least to me when I look at it. Uh, elk salmon. I block my elk, but it gives me a salmon. Yeah, I'm going to do that. So I'm going to open this up oh, this way, place the salmon there, starting a salmon run, and giving me an option for a bonus to place elk later. Now I'm keeping in mind what's going to shift what I can select later rounds. So selecting from the beginning of this row during solo play helps me out more than selecting from the rear of the the line. So like if I wanted to choose, I could go and take this salmon. I'd lose the bear option. Because I could go and get bear going. Score the uh, score bonus for the bear. Really leave myself open. Start my salmon run. That does combo both habitats, which is a nice option. But I would lose the bear no matter what. I'm going to take the bear because I talked about wanting to play bear option and not as much wanting to play the salmon option this game. We'll see if it pay pays off or not. Because again, we're playing for points in this scenario. This scenario is asking us to achieve 80 points. I could grab an eagle, give myself another eagle, habitats match with an elk extension option. Okay. Oh, I didn't take my bonus token for that bear on that single. I'll take this elk, habitats match, elk down here. I can save that for next turn. I'm going to go here now, get my bonus here match my habitats oof it's gonna be harder uh, okay so what I'm doing here I do this but what I'm gonna need to end up doing 
is doing more hawks because they need to be in direct line of sight. These would not be considered line of sight because they need to be something like this direct line. This setup would be considered adjacent. Unless I wanted to set up like this and go all the way across. But then I'm outside my primary tableau right now. So we're, I like to stay condensed as possible. Okay, there's that one. Shift those tiles out. Tokens, salmon, bear. Okay, bear. Give me another eagle option, elk option. I'm going to spin a token to be able to take that eagle now and set up for that one. Place this eagle. No, no, I don't have to play eagle there. I can play elk to go for an elk shape. I'm okay with that tile. Take the elk. Keep my token. I go here with the tile. My habitats. I could probably go bear set up there. And elk down here to get another token for now. Lose that. Tiles. Tokens. Let's do a quick check and verify a scoring rule on the elk one, just so we don't mess it up. So if we look at it, the elk, so this is the exact shape, but I want to make sure if this shape has to be left and right, or if it could be sideways in any way. And any orientation, yep. Yeah, so that orientation would count. It's just the shape. It's not doing a run of three or four. I can do that. I'm okay with that option. Uh, found another bear. That would be... That would work for up here in this habitat sector. Salmon's not as important. I can even place the salmon anyway. Not unless I spent something. Gray, green, not great. Fox, eagle, might work in a little bit. Just gonna take this set. And then do that. Place the bear. Now either I can go bear or salmon on that direction. Eagles pop out. This eagle I could prepare up here, try to connect the wetlands. That'd be line of sight eagle. This eagle. If I wanted to take this with another eagle, I could do that one instead. And then I'd drop the fox. That that eagle would still be in play. Yeah, I'm gonna spend one of those. Take these. The scoring option. Prairie eagle on line of sight. And to verify that how that scores.
Hawks can score for each other. Hawk, each pair of hawks are for lines of sight. Line of sight is a straight line from flat side to flat side of hexagons as pictured. A line of sight is only interrupted by the presence of another hawk. Therefore, line of sight may not cross from one hawk to another through a hawk. So, the, so open spaces is still line of sight. That's all I need to need to see in case I don't fill that later. Okay, another bear. Nice. We needed the bears out. But, oh, there's no bears. Okay. I can post the bear there, though. Later. Hawk. Salmon wet. Water wet salmon. I could push it into here. There's a hawk out there. You can water away over here or something. Yeah, I'm gonna do this option here to continue my river. Just give me an option of a salmon run. If I choose to, there's that set. This set. There's another elk. Ooh, elk on elk. It's strong. Okay, do I want the bear play? Here. And then I'm forcing myself into two more bears. Well, I've already forced myself into bears anyway. Hawk play would be nice. Here. I think bear is slightly stronger. Allows me to open up my salmon run down this way instead. Yeah, I want a bear play. Talked at the beginning, I was gonna f try to focus on more bears. So that's what I'm doing. I need to open up my river option openings. This one hawk away. In view, okay. Token, token, okay, there's another bear. I'll need a elk. This is what I talked about wanting. Another elk pair. Okay, well, if that's there, I can skip it. Fox, I could get the point. Give me a bear card. That's river based or mountain based. Rivers, I got five mountains. I got three. Forest and river up there. Spend a token. Take a tile and a bear. This will make sense because this allows me to get the bear. I'll work on my mountains next. My group of three of bears down here. If I go elk, they're going to go like this. Fox and elk. Now split up that elk token option. Okay, I wanted to keep my terrain options available. Uh, fox, I have a place for it. Don't care as much for that tile though. Elk. Could go up here because I'm not gonna hawk it. Set myself water away here. Yep. Set myself in the waterway here to continue it and allow my bears to open up.
Okay, do I want the, uh, that tile as a hawk bear? Set my bear. So do I set my hawk with the fox? Which is already has a pair on it, so that's a three point or four point fox. And I can set myself up over here with the hawk. Elk it blocks itself from not unless I play over here, which is not what I want to see with it. Another hawk would be water prairie, which we're over here anyway. No, because I can take that next round. Yep. Do this. Get another one of these back. I can actually continue my mountain instead. And that would be line of sight, that hawk, if I fill it. There's the end. Two more tokens. Okay, so we got a hawk over here. And I want a hawk for this, for sure. Don't want to limit myself with the bear. That hawk would be elk specific. Don't care for it as much. That up there is a um, mountain. Five pool. Bear, salmon, water. Yeah, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna spin this, take a hawk, and this one. All oh, those gonna shift. I would lose that. Hawk and bear don't care about salmon. I could continue set up for an elk play. No. Set this here. Continue my prairie. Hawk down here. I can get a fox there. It's already a paired up hawk. I can potentially get at least an elk above it. I didn't actually spin that token. Uh, hawk play, no. Salmon run here. Opens up a bear. Hawk salmon. Hawk. And water, not really. It's an elk play. Bear fox. I could get the salmon. And I'm just going to take these salmon out to continue my run. I'm going to try to continue my mountains. You know, if I just do this, that connects one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Makes my habitat better. That's better. Bear. Okay, there's the bear I've been looking for. But does that habitat help me? Or do I want a different habitat? Habitat, if I get some more water, which is not available right now. I'm at six water. I want a prairie. I got a bear down. I want the salmon's a two point salmon until I get one more after that. Bear's better off. The hawk. Isn't worth it yet. 
three point jump. Same way we need same placement. Should spend that to do that for a two point jump. Set myself for six point jump in a minute though. Might have to do that. I really want the bear. Bear would survive. Another fox bear placement. Yep. Spin this. Salmon in this. Allows me to. I'm going to go full risk on this one. Salmon this one. These are going to slide. That goes out. This goes over. Bear elk. This allows me to go bear and that one. Bear's gonna go here. I've already decided that. If I go here, that's my mountains. Could fox it. So if I go up here, it's gonna block that, I think. Push into my mountains. In case I can get a fox there in a minute. Lose that set. This comes over. This does this. I'll probably ruin my plans for what I initially had set up a while ago. It happens. Because I could sit. I'd have to go. Oh, there's one, two bears. So I could look for one more bear. To bear, to bear. Mountain bear. Let's go full risk. No risk, no reward. I'm going to go bear. Out of my mountain terrain. Bear here. Because I still want a fox here. I want a bear here. Just put it there for now. Lose those. Shift those. Two more. Now I only have, what, three more turns? Um, yep, three more turns. Well, thank you for stopping by. I do appreciate you being here. I hope you enjoy your dinner. And have a great evening as well. Um, I'm trying to remember where online they have this game right now. Uh, I know they had made, uh, released a digital version during the Kickstarter to try out. But also, if you're going to be at any of the game conventions coming up, I'd be more than happy to try to play a game together. Because I, I plan to be at Gen Con Origins and possibly even PAX U this year. But thank you for stopping by. I hope you have a wonderful evening. Enjoy your dinner. So I need to, okay, so that was salmon that came out. There's the fox. Spin this now to get this set up. Because I need a bear option. But that would have to go there. It's a two, three point play over there. Four risk for, for uh, reward. And go bear on here. Gets me that token back. There's those. Shift over two tiles first. Come on, bear. Okay, that's a fox. Bear? Nope. Okay. I'll have one more chance at the end. But I could salmon run for six points. That's a solid play. That still leaves a fox in play, which a fox play could only get me five points. May not have should have done that while ago. Salmon run. Can't connect the habitat. Well, I back up Fox plan at least, but yeah, I need to go salmon. That's my biggest point play right now. 
can't go here. Can't go there. It's just off in the wild by itself. But it's a salmon run. I'm gonna do this just in case I can connect my uh, river. Use this one. Slide down. Two more tiles. Let's see what we got. Come on, bear token. An eagle. Oh, and there's the bear. If anything, I can get a bear trifecta. Let's verify the point so that I would set up with that though. A waterway would be connected here. That's a four point fox. B plus three. So that's a seven point play. Seven point for that set. Salmon run. I don't want salmon. So I'm just going to flip this to show I don't want it. Put that tile is not worth as much for me either. An eagle wouldn't help my habitat. Well, the eagle. I don't have an open eagle spot that's worth anything. Bear spot I have ready. So I could take a different tile for the one, two, four points for the tile plus bears is ten. So you spending one for ten plus four fourteen. So that's a thirteen point play right there. That seems pretty obvious there. So spin this. Take the bear and this. Habitat connects my waters. Bear over here. For set of bears okay so that was last turn because there are not enough tiles to flip over in the wheel let me push those to the side and let's get to scoring hopefully I kept all this on screen this time it looks like I did nice and then number two scenario uh, hopefully I can zoom this in a little bit for y'all. Okay, hopefully y'all can watch how this scores. See it a little bit closer now that I'm done playing. So what we're going to do first, I'm going to score bears in this scenario every set of three group of three bears that do not touch other bears scores three points so i have one two three groups that's 30 points just for bears next up is elk elks are based on size of the group uh, groups may not be touching they have to be in the exact shape being one two in a row three in a triangle which i don't have the triangle of course or a diamond shape each elk can only score once. I only have two elk right here. That's a five point grouping. Next up we have the salmon. A salmon run is based on the length. So I have a one, two, three, four, five salmon run. None of them are adjacent beyond just side by side or in a line. Uh, scores for each run per salmon. Runs may not be adjacent to each other. So I have one run of five plus that's 17 points. Next up, we have hawks. Uh, scores for each hawk that is not adjacent to any other hawk and has direct line of sight to a hawk. So I have three different hawks. This one's in line of sight of that. These are in line of sight of each other or that way. So I have three hawks that can score for this. Three of them is nine points. Last but not least, foxes. Now I have one fox on the field, so it's easy to score. These scores for each uh, number of unique adjacent animal pairs. I have one pair next to it, so that's a three-point fox. So as you can tell from last game, I shifted into different animals based on scoring patterns and what was available. So just for wildlife animals, I scored 30 plus 5 is 35 plus 17 is 52 plus 9 is 61 plus 3 is 64. Okay, so now we're going to score habitats. So we're going to score our mountain region first. And remember, because of its solo mode, 
if I have seven or more, I get two additional points for that terrain type. We're going to be scoring each terrain type once based on its largest connected terrain section. So mountains, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, plus the two. Uh, forest, uh, my biggest one, there's one, one, or three, not very big. Prairies, um, I have a one, one, two, four, so four for that. Wetlands, I have a one, one, or a two, so really did not add much to it there. And then I have my river, I have a one, two, one, 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 or one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight plus the two. So I have 9 plus 2 is 11, plus 3 is 14, plus 4 is 18, plus 2 is 20, plus 8 is 28, plus 2 is 30. Uh, I have no additional scoring tokens because I spent all of these. So that leaves me 64 plus 30 is going to be 94. So two games in a row, 94 points, both games. But again, I did meet the scenario and beat it as it asks for at least 80 points using all B cards. So, we did quite well. Um, I'm a little surprised both games got the exact same score, but sometimes that happens. It can be fun that way.